Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, if you're finding it all a bit dull, it's time to drill down and get through it. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, one of the most use, used tools in the workshop are drill bits. So, like many model engineers, got a little pot here full of ones that have all become too dull to use, they don't cut properly. So a few months back, first time I've had it on the bench, treat, treated myself to one of these. Now this is from Heron Forbes here in Australia, otherwise known as Hafco. There we go, Hafco drill sharpener, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 80 watts, there we go. Right, now, I've had a bit of a play with it, and it seems to put a fairly nice grind. This drill, if I can get it to focus, was, come on, focus, there we go. You can see it's got a nice shiny grind on it. Oh, come on. There we are. So this one I'll say is done and I'll give it a try. I'll try some of them in a little while. Get a bit of scrap into the drill press probably and have a go. Took me a little while to get the understanding on how this thing works. Nice little manual. Reads fairly well until you get the, to the instructions. Now, this is my opinion only, and yeah, all right, here we go. Now, this is my opinion only, and I'm going to use a term, I'm not very happy with it, but it's one I've heard before, and it's basically called, so I get the feeling this was written by somebody in an Asian country, I'll say, and it's been run through somebody who thinks they speak English, Thankfully, they've got pictures, and thankfully, Heron Forbes actually on YouTube somewhere have a video uh, explaining how to use this thing, because the video, to be honest, is more use than the little manual that comes with it. You can see on the back there, there's a little exploded parts list. I don't know if there's any spares available for this thing. I don't know if you go to Heron Forbes and say, look, I need a blah, 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 because it's died on me. I did at the same time when I bought this. I bought the spare grinding wheel, which is uh, for use on HSS, which most drills are anyway. I, I dare say the machine comes with one anyway. But I, so I've got a spare grinding wheel. The machine itself, very neat, very natty. This is the drill holder. This is a big kind of locking collar on here that you can see me spinning here with I mean, like just one hand. It's not the easiest thing. Comes Once it gets a drill in, I wonder if I can get them to come out. Yes, there we go. You can see there's some prongs there coming out. They come out and clamp the drill. They go all the way through. There's a good shot. You can see how it clamps the drill in six positions, so it's holding it centrally. And uh, you whack a drill in, put it into this section, push the button, slide the drill all the way in. It hits a stop. Let me have a look. That little silver button down there. You can see that it hits the little silver button. That means it's at the right length. Those two metal clamps there, you can see them waggling. Then grab the drill and actually twist it into the right position. The drill then goes, you then put the whole thing into here, move that out of the way. That takes you through into the grinding wheel, which is that thing you can see there. And you can see the locating slots here, because this whole thing box back and forward. Come on, you gotta focus, there we go. You keep, you do that until the grinding noise stops. And then you turn the whole of this thing, pull it out, turn it 180 degrees, slot it back in, grind, 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 grind. They then also suggest using this thing at the top, which puts, I think they call it a split point in the end, although it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference at the moment to me. Uh, I'll just be happy if I can get these drills sharpened. Although if you buy drills like I do in packs of 10 or so, they're less than a couple of bucks each, and is it really worth, especially the small ones, is it really worth sharpening them? It's probably not. It's probably uh, better if you just bin them and get a new one out of the packet. The machine itself seems to be fairly its fairly heavy. It's nicely built, nice bright colour. Well, that, that, that won't make any difference to the drills, of course. And uh, this somehow looks very familiar. I've seen this in videos or something very similar to it by a company, I believe it's an American company, called Drill Doctor. They do a very similar... Uh, very similar system by the look of things, although 
Uh, so I get the feeling this is either a clone or something based on the Drill Doctor system. Uh, Drill Doctor I've never seen here in Australia. I've not really looked for it. This was on sale at Aaron Forbes a few months ago. Uh, so I went to my local Aaron Forbes, which is in, uh, in, in North Adelaide. And uh, they're not called Heron Forbes, they're called General Tools. So I think they're an agent rather than actual Heron Forbes. Doesn't make any difference. I still was able to get them to get one of these for me at the sale price. Took them about a week because they had to get one in. They didn't have one on the shelf this time around. So, uh, yeah, uh, right. I'll just pause the video here, get you on to the tripod, and hopefully I can then work with two hands and we'll get a drill ground and I'll kind of show you the setup as best I can as I'm going along. All right, guys, just give me a couple of seconds. I'll get you onto the tripod. Right, back again. So, one drill out of the pot, one holder. I've opened it up quite a bit. You can see from the last shot, those six fins in there are a lot wider now. So, drill goes down the middle, sticks out a bit, wind this down till it just starts to hold. Let's have a look. Can you see? I've got a bit way to go. Uh, now you can just start to see those those fins coming out. That's maybe a little bit tight. Right, a little bit, little bit looser. Right, there we go. So that's kind of just at the point where it's going to start clamping. Now, this then has to go into here. These two prongs, have a, there's a gap in the ring over here. They line up. There we go. That goes in as far as it will. It doesn't go any further than that. Push on the drill and you push the button. Now that moves forward. And I think you heard the click. So that means that those two metal, I'll just move this forward a bit. Let's have a look, see if we can get you in a bit closer. You can now see, hang on, I'll tell you what, let's give this a try. Ding. Nope, let's go to try zooming you in a bit closer. Ah, there we go. So now that drill is now touching that silver button just down there, and those two, this. You can see those two little st sprung steel levers and now clamping the drill literally by the flutes down the sides. Once you get it there, tighten that up, pull it out. I suppose really you should push the button, get loosen it up. Right, get you back onto the tripod, standing still. There we go. So you can see the grinding wheel in there. And we'll just now close that just to make sure no sparks come out. I did have to just put these two screws in and hold the rubber covers in. Now, as I said, these two uh, bits, I'll call them bits, line up only in one way. So it only goes in. Let's get, let's get, get this right. There we go. Right, now, well, I've, I've found I've already tried grinding a few. You don't really want to be going and really yamming this thing in because it hits the grinding wheel fairly hard. So what I've started doing is I'm going to get the machine running and I'm going to go in gently so it, here you hear it grinding. And then the system is that. And that's all there is to it. When it stops the grinding noise, take it out, whip it over 180 degrees, grill the other side. And re ditto, repeato until you get as little noise as possible. So I'm going to start this up and we'll get this ground. I'll do the, two, the 180 and we'll see what it looks like. So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's not very loud. Just going to go in gently, gently until we make contact. There we go. Back and forth. That's as far as this black thing in the hand goes. It won't go any further. That seems to be quietening down a little bit. Right, so I'll pull that out. Turn him 180 degrees. Slot him back in. Now losing the prongs there. There we go. So gently, gently. Back and forth, back and forth. going to take that out and have a quick look at it. Doesn't look too bad. 
Well, it looks a bit buggered there. This drill might have been not a good choice. It might be even more buggered than I thought it was. Right, okay. Feels nice and sharp. That's really snagging on my fingers. Yeah, yeah. Point doesn't look too bad. Now, you see where the other bit comes in. Open that up. Two different prongs on it now. These two on the sides. There's only the two, as you can see. And they go into here. And again, just gently, gently. Just backwards and forwards. Don't go jamming it right down very quickly. Otherwise, I think you might just strike the grinding wheel too hard. There we go. I think we're in. No, we ain't. Yes, we are. That's as far down as it'll go. Ah, the grinding noise is finished. I don't know if you need to turn it around 180 degrees, but that's what I've been doing. It's going to go in. There it goes. See what I mean about that dropping it down too fast. Strike the wheel a bit hard. Oops, there goes the tripod. Just zoom out of it. That's so you can see what I'm doing, just backwards and forwards until it stops grinding. And pull it out. There we go. Cover that back up again. Right. Kill the power. And look at that now. Turn a look. Yeah, I suppose that's not bad. Come on, focus. There we go. I'll have a quick look myself. <laughs> Close enough to it. All right. That seems to have done the point on it quite nicely. Right. So I think the thing to do now is, of course, undo that. There we go. You feel a little bit of a click. I think what I'll do is I'll get a bit of scrap material into the drill press and uh, put a center drill in it just to give this something to start on, give it a fair chance of being overcut. And we'll see if we can get through it. Won't be much, maybe a bit of three mil or something, three mil steel. Not guaranteeing I'll get through it, but this is the first time I've ground these drills on this kind of machine, so we'll find out. Right, give me a couple of minutes, guys. I'll get this set up. Right, oh, guys. Just managed to find a bit of scrap. Just put a little dimple in the end with the center drill. Put the drill I've just sharpened in the chuck. So let's give this a try, shall we? I'm making chips anyway. Yeah. One flew away there. Oh, there's a long one. Right, now throw into the timber. Turn the drill off. Ah, there we go. Where is it? There we are. So, one hole. Not many burrs on the back of that, that wouldn't take much cleaning up. Yep, here's the swarf. That was cutting quite nicely, and then we went through. So, yeah. I think we'll call that a success. Right, okay guys. Anybody else got one of these? It'd be interesting to see it here in your comments. Put them in the one of the comments on this video, it'd be good to hear from you. So uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time now drilling and grinding, well, they're not drilling, grinding a few more of those drills, see what they come up like. Uh, but yeah, I'll call this to a, a finish now, short video for a change. And uh, I'll finish it like I normally do. If you can find it in your heart and soul, then a subscribe, like, and hit the bell for a notification would be absolutely great. Not totally necessary, but it does motivate me to get back out and in the workshop when I can. As I always said, I'm a working man, so I'm just in a bit of a, well, as I'm recording this, it's uh, I'm in the Christmas break. So uh, back to work in a couple of days. All right, so call this one to a close, guys. All right, this is The Chef signing out for now. See you again next time. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.